Yo, what is going on, everybody? Is your boy Ansel Armstrong back again? And today we are going to be discussing some of the most effective ways that I have found to make stubs in this game by just playing the game. So, as we all know, flipping cards on the market is a very effective way to make subs. It'll be the show 20, and a lot of people have a lot of success doing so. And just last week, we made a video on the do's and don'ts of flipping. You can find the link to that video in the description below. But today, I wanted to take a slightly different approach and talk about all the ways that I make stubs besides flipping. I know for a lot of people that flipping can be tedious. Um, they're not as effective with it. They don't seem to make a ton of stubs with it. And quite frankly, they just want to be able to go through and play the game instead of spending 10 hours flipping on the market to make some stubs and work your way up to the live series collection. So we're going to be talking about what to do in MLB The Show 20 to make stubs without having to flip on any cards on the market, just playing the game strictly. Let's dive into our first one. So this first one is going to be pretty encompassing and it's a pretty strong theme that we have here on the channel, but it's quite simply take what the game is going to give you. The game gives you a lot of tools and opportunities to succeed and have success in this game and uh, be able to make subs from playing the game. You just have to know where to look for those and take advantage of them. For example, something like the moments. If we come in here um, and we look at our team affinity moments, right? You are getting about 7,000, 8,000 subs from stage two. You're getting another 8,000 from stage one. You have evolution moments that are getting you, you know, 2,000, 4,000, 3,600, 3,000, 3,000. We do 3,000 per at one, two, three, four, five. There's another 15,000 subs. Come down here to create a player moments. You're looking at 1,100, 1,400, 1,000. You can see how quickly all this adds up. So don't ignore your moments. Take what the game's going to give you here. If you go through and knock out all these moments, you're going to find yourself some subs. Same goes for player programs, right? We come in here to the player programs. I know these, this first little bit is pretty basic, but again, 1,500 subs there. Keith Hernandez, another 1,500 subs. You extrapolate that over time. Next thing you know, you've made 20, 30, 40, 50,000 subs just from knocking out some moments, playing a couple programs, completing those, and you've gone through and you've knocked out subs and your sub count has tripled, quadrupled in size just from playing the game. Not to mention that you're getting additional awards on top of this, your player cards that can be used for a Honus type collection later on, uh, getting progress through team affinities, et cetera, et cetera. You're making, it's a double-edged sword here. You're getting a lot of progress and you're making subs while doing so. So continuing our theme on programs, let's also take a look at some of the bigger programs and some of the stubs you can make from that. So let's take a look at the Blake Snell Players League program. Now, let's say that you're no money spent player and you're going for Mickey Mantle. I don't think it's a great idea to go for Blake Snell, but what you can get instead is you have your quarterfinal pack. Let's look at Gallo right now. He's selling for 8,700 subs. Let's round that up. Let's just round it and say 8,000 subs. So if you get two of these, you make 16,000 subs there, and then you get your semifinal player. And let's go with, let's say we get Giolito. He sells for 35K, right? Now we've made 51,000 stubs just from this player program. As easy as that, 51,000 subs from knocking out this player program. All you got to do is come on, do these missions, do the moments. Don't do the collection, obviously. Do the missions and moments. You're getting all the way up to the 90. You're getting the 2K stubs on top of that. You're making close to 55,000 stubs just from a couple hours of work in your player program so again take what the game gets you take advantage of the free content that the game is going to put out and when you take advantage of that you're going to be able to make a significant amount of stubs doing so and then finally continuing this theme of programs honestly in my opinion full transparency here i think this is the absolute best way to make subs in this game it is your inning programs these inning programs give you tons of rewards not to mention things like the conquest from the program gives you packs. Example for this third inning program, you get the five bundle pack, the bond is a habit pack and a prospect pack. Those prospect packs are at least 5,000 subs in value. Maybe you get one of the rare rounds and you make 30 K stubs from that. But not to mention if you're going through and completing this program, you're picking up more packs, 
for stubs along the way. Headliners, hey, you never know. Show pack, who knows if Mike Trout's in there. Another prospect pack. And again, let's say you go rare tier, you get Robert. He's selling for 21K right now. That's making a significant impact on going after a guy like Trout or Cody Bellinger or Garrett Cole. Just from what we've talked about already, you know, if you make 60K from the Players League programs, you make another 30K from the moments, you make 20K from here, you're almost at enough for a Garrett Cole guy already. And then you have Ball in as a Habit Pack, Classic Stadium, you know, the list goes on and on. And then you get to your inning bosses. You're able to complete these inning programs quickly. You can cash in on a ton of stubs. Let's take a look at Chipper Jones here and look at his marketplace here. As you can see on the first day here, just to the right of me, that first day, his average sell now price was 200 and 91,000 stubs. So if you were to able to grind out and complete him, uh, and that was the second day, excuse me, that was the second day. If you're able to grind out and complete him for that, on that second day, he was selling around 291, between 200 to 300,000 stubs. If you, if you were able to grind out this program, complete it in the first day, you almost have enough stubs for Mike Trout alone. And not to mention that as these programs go on, as we continue through these programs into the fourth, fifth, and sixth inning, the value of these cards is only going to increase as the value uh, in overall and usability and in-gameness, for lack of a better term, of these cards increases. You're going to have cards that are maintaining several hundred thousand subs in value of these inning programs. And all you're going to have to go through is go through and complete it. But again, look in here, you complete it first day, you're making a significant amount of subs at least 100, 150, 200, 250,000. I know personally from the second inning program, uh, I sold my Hanley Ramirez for 225,000 stubs. And that was actually the final bit of stubs I needed to go in and get Mickey Mantle. So I can't, I can't stress it enough how important these inning programs are and how beneficial they can be in terms of making subs. You get tons of free rewards from packs, from players, from the bosses you just have to be willing to go through and one grind it out complete the program and then two go through and sell all the rewards that you get as much as you may want to use chipper jones if your goal is getting as many subs as possible hey go through and sell them especially if you get them early as we can see even there in to the third day he's selling around 80 to 90k and now he's down to around 40k so even if you get them on the third or fourth day Go ahead and sell them for now, and then you can pick them up later for a much reduced price. And another thing to mention about these programs is that even after 300 stars, there's still more rewards to lock in. We have five packs, 2,000 subs, a set three prospect pack, which again, let's look at Casey Mines. What's he selling for? 23K. Those guys are going to sell. You're going to get some solid subs, 2,000 subs, 3,000 subs, a headliner, you want to grind out, you want to play the game, you will be rewarded that way, especially through these inning programs. Now, another area of the game that, again, has been one of the most effective ways for me to make stubs is through the events, especially with the new cumulative event setup this year. They're able to put in better rewards, and in my opinion, they're more attainable. So, for example, the live series one event that we have here, you get four player cards while going through it along with the packs. Again, we have one pack, silver pack, three, three uh, show packs. You have the gold player. And again, Jason Kindle, he's not going to sell for a lot, 1,400 subs. Hey, everything adds up. Everything counts. You got the gold player pack. And then you get the Troy Percival. Right now, he's selling for about 10,000 stubs on the marketplace right now. You go through, you get him. Then you get the headliners packs. Then you get Lofton, right? He's selling for 23K. So we've already made 35,000 or so stubs, right? Get another three packs. You get another 2,000 subs. Then you get Fred McGriff, and he's selling for 30K subs. So let's say you go through and you complete this to 50 wins, not including the value you're getting from these packs. You're getting about 60K worth just in players that you can then go through and put up on the market. Now, of course, this is a bit of a grind, right? Uh, especially if you don't have a lot of live series players, but it is really easy to go through and put together a solid team for these events, especially when live series players are allowed. There's so many good silver and gold live series players. You can go through and put together a great event squad. And 
you know, in addition to that, the switch hitter event is coming up real soon and we're going to have brand new rewards. We have that Sinsu Chu coming along with the Eddie Murray. If you're able to come on here and the beauty of events is even if you're not great at online games, you have free entries, you have unlimited entries. You can keep playing over and over and over. If you can go on and just play the game, play online, get these event wins, get these cumulative rewards. You're going to be bringing in some high value cards that you can then either add to your squad if you want to, or sell them, help fund your way to Mickey Mantle, help fund your way to get a 12 and 0 world series reward, whatever you choose to do with your subs, it's going to be a great way to funnel it. And of course, not to mention, you never know what time in one of these packs, you know, you open enough packs, you're bound to get something good eventually, but I highly, highly, highly recommend going through and knocking out these event wins. The rewards are extremely, extremely beneficial, and you can be racking in a lot of stubs from doing so. Now, on to one of the next ways that I found super beneficial to making stubs, just grinding out the game. That is your team affinities. Honestly, in my opinion, team affinities have been one of the most welcomed additions to the game this year. They've really blown team affinities out the park in terms of rewards within them. Team affinities, uh, the last couple of years have been more so-so this year. They made them more long-term. They made them more in game and the rewards are pretty insane. So through each team, you're getting a gold prospect. You're getting the diamond face of the franchise and you're getting the diamond future stars cards, all very good cards. But in terms of making subs, you're getting 9,000 subs per team that you complete to 120. You're getting 9,000 subs. You're getting a ball and is a habit pack. And you're getting, what do we have? Three, nine, 12 team affinity packs, which have the same odds as show packs. So you're getting 360 packs, 30 ball and is a habit packs, and 270,000 subs for getting every team to team affinity 120. Now, again, that is a tremendous grind. I'm not even close to doing that. We're slowly working our way. We're up to about 12 future star players. We're slowly working our way there, but this is a great way to build up your stub count and slowly over time accumulate, work through these team affinities. You never know what you're going to get out of these packs. If you have two, uh, 360 packs to open and 30 ball on as a habit packs, I guarantee, I guarantee you're going to pull at least something worth of decent value that you can go through sell and build up your sub count i guarantee it there's no way we, with that many packs you're gonna do okay with that many packs you're gonna do okay and i'm telling you man these team affinity packs are kind of juiced these team affinity packs are kind of juiced something about them something about them, something about the packs you get for free have really solid rewards i strongly recommend against buying packs in the market all right, if you're trying to build a sub count, don't buy packs. It's not the way. Never. Never buy packs. Please, never buy packs. But take these packs you get for free and cherish them and pull you some nice diamonds because there's going to be something hiding in those. But go through, grind out your team affinities. Lots of re rewards to be had here. Lots of, you know, you got the player cards, you got the packs, you got the stubs. From a value standpoint alone, so including uh, the 9,000 subs per team's Valuing each team affinity pack at 1,500 stubs and each bond is a habit pack at 5,000 stubs. You're getting a total value of 960,000 stubs for completing every team affinity to 120. Now, of course, you're not necessarily going to get 1,500 stubs of value from every pack. Um, you, you very well could. Some might get more. A lot are going to get less. But just for the sake of a value sense, 1,500 subs per pack. 5,000 for ball is a habit. That's almost a million stubs worth of value from completing your team affinities. Don't overlook these and be sure to come in here and grind them out as you're trying to build stubs. One quick note I also want to make as we're going through is don't forget to come in and do some of these collections. So, uh, you know, let's look at these legends and flashbacks. Let's say you're picking up future stars players, right? If you have 30 of them, you get 5,000 stubs plus the 3,000 plus another 2,500 there from those. You're talking close to over 10,000 subs plus the bond as a habit pack, right? And if you have the 30 future stars, you also have the 30 uh, face of the franchise guys. So come in here, collect these. If you do the players league collection, you get stubs back. Same with the prime. You get the 100 stubs, which 100 subs in anything, but you get the bond as a habit pack. 
Same with All Star. You're getting some subs. Breakout. You know, there's stubs along all these. They're not going to be much, but be sure you're going in here and you're collecting these. Uh, same can be said for your prestige, guys. If you have non sellable prestige players, guys like Chipper Jones, you get a thousand subs. If you have the inning bosses, if you have Mantle, Biggio, Sheffield, you're getting a thousand subs for those. Be sure to come in and knock those out. The key to making subs in this game is to take all the little things. Don't overlook the little things. A thousand subs here, a thousand subs there. Boom, boom. That's going to add up and go a long way to making subs. Same can be said as well. A lot of people overlook these create a player collections. If you look at the pitchers, we're getting... What is that? 2250 stubs for gold. Um, you get another 1250 uh, for the pit for for the bronze pitchers, and then another 750 uh, for the bronze guys. So uh, you do that for every position. I think it's close to like 25, 30 k stubs just from doing these collections. So the next point I want to talk about a bit of a hot topic around the community some, but that is showdowns. I know a lot of people struggle with showdowns a lot if people do want a tips and tutorials videos on my approach to knocking out and completing showdowns i probably went about 95 percent of the time if people would like to see that let me know down in the comment section below more than willing to put that video together but showdown so let's look we're looking at the national league stage two showdown just as an example here um, and as you can see, you're picking up stubs for every single one of these missions. So in total, not to mention, again, two birds, one stone. We like to be efficient and effective with our time. In addition to knocking out those team affinities and working your way to that million stubs worth of value from those, you're going to be getting, if you were to win every mission, which you probably won't win every mission, but let's say you win every mission, you get 4,000 subs worth of value uh, or just 4,000 subs straight up from these showdowns, not to mention the show pack along with the silver player pack as well. So those are going to have some inherent value in each as well. So if you get about five to 6,000 stubs of value from every showdown run and you're knocking out team affinities, I think it's one of the best things in this game to grind for XP and stubs. Come in here, knock out your showdowns, be smart, you know, Get your good perks, get a good squad together. You'll be able to knock them out, especially these stage two ones. So the next thing I want to talk about, and I know we said we were not going to include flipping in this video. And trust me, this is not flipping. I call these investments. So let me be a little bit clear with what I say. So I, I think the big thing about these is that they're not going to take as much time. They're very quick. They're very short and they have very high payoffs. So let's take a look at Paul DeJong as an example of what I consider an investment. So as the game goes on, since we do not have live series roster fluctuations this year without real baseball at this moment, there are no upgrades and downgrade investment opportunities. But that does not mean that cards are flatline and they do not fluctuate in price. Let's take a look at Paul DeJong here. When we scroll over to his marketplace, uh, we can see he has a very strong peak around uh, April 29th there, peaking at around 1,300 subs. And as you can see on the 20th, he was only worth, mm, we'll say 500 subs as a conservative number, closer to really 450, right? So if you're buying a bunch of a card at 450 subs and you're selling him for 1,300 subs and you're making 720 subs of profit per card, you're printing, you're printing money at that point. So then the question is, why is this happening right so this for example was from the player of the month program when um the dd dropped and the tim anderson dropped we saw a spike in the prices of shortstop players as they were then tied to an exchange needed to accumulate and acquire those cards right we were able to predict that beforehand i know a lot of people in this community that i've been talking to stocked up on shortstops i'm talking 50 60 70 uh versions of three to four different high silver shortstop cards and then boom they skyrocketed in price everybody cashed in let's say somebody had 30 paul de jongs at 720 subs each they made 21 000 subs and putting in 30 orders that takes two three minutes to go through and do they sat it they forget it they forgot about it and then boom you come through and sell them a week later you make 21k those are the kind of things that I look for when I'm going through and making investments 
uh, we're always capitalized on those. Another example would be gold players. Just this last Friday, when the new when the new Mother's Day Conquest map dropped, there were two ball and a habit packs in that Conquest map that caused gold prices to just about skyrocket downwards. Um, so you had guys like Labor Taurus selling for a thousand subs. You're able to pick them up at quick sell value, go turn around, flip them for fifteen hundred the next day. And you made very, very easy stuff. So it's all about investments. And we talk about a lot of those investments live on our Twitch channel. Uh, unfortunately, with how quick investments go, whether it be a live sell, we do have a video talking about investments for live sales. Be sure to check that out. Link for that one will be in the description below as well. But unfortunately, with the uh, way of the market and how quick it goes, a lot of that is more real-time adjustments and on the fly moves that we're making. So if you do wanna to try to come in, capitalize on some of these investments, see what I'm investing in at the time, and just talk generally about the market and what are some smart moves to be making, be sure to hit up our live streams on Twitch. The link will be down in the description below. We're always helping people out, uh, making subs, talking about the best ways to make subs, what I'm doing in that current moment to be making subs, as you can see. Uh, we don't have a ton of subs, we're sitting on 211K, but I just spent about 120K or so, give or take, picking up the three bosses yesterday. And I'm sitting on some cars that have some value as well. So we're always talking about how we're making subs, what kind of moves we're making. If you ever have any questions, feel free to hit me up live on Twitch there. Now, the last thing I want to note here, it's something I've talked about before, but I want to go through and reiterate here. And simply what I call it is binder and inventory management. And at least once a week, what you need to be doing is coming through and selling everything you're not using. If you're not using it to actively work towards a collection or not in your lineup, or it's a duplicate, come through here and sell these cards. We got a Renato Nunez right here. He's 124 stubs. Not insane, but it all adds up. Wade LeBlanc, another 76 stubs. Again, it doesn't sound like a lot, and it can be a little tedious, but you go through, you clean your binder out once a week. We got some silvers here. Those are selling for a couple hundred subs. You go through and clear your binder out once a week. I've had people come in and tell me they had 70, 80, 90 K worth of cards. They were sitting on just in duplicates in their binder in you know, the bronze silver range that they never looked at. Didn't even really think about. Same can be said for your unlockables here. Let's see if I have any gold ones. You know, the diamond ones, they sell for about a thousand each. And here we go. You got a gold uh, reverse flip left-handed two bat flip here right if we look in the market selling for 665 subs these quick sell at 500 subs right if you if you've been opening packs you haven't looked at these all year you probably got several thousand subs of these you're just sitting on in your inventory so go through clear out your inventory your stadiums your equipment sponsorships clear those bad boys out at least once a week you'll be surprised at that influx of subs that it will give you so that does do it for today's video those are the most efficient and effective ways I found of making stubs in this game that for the most part involve just going on and playing the game, hitting the baseball, hitting some dingers, having some fun, and making stubs while we're doing it. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. Your support through that is always so, so much appreciated. And I hope you all who've watched the video understand that. And I hope this video was helpful for you. Let me know down in the comment section below. How many subs are you working with right now? And what are you saving up subs for? What are your goals with your subs? And what have you found as effective ways to go through and make subs in MLB The Show 20? And again, as always, we do stream live on Twitch. If you ever have any questions, come by the live stream, stop in, ask us any questions about making subs, working the market, what kind of lineup you should be rocking with uh if you got how to, how, to, how to complete the programs quickly events yada yada come through we're always there to help we have an awesome community a lot of people that we're helping to build up subs build up their team no money spent money spent doesn't really matter also as well down in the description below my twitter is there my dms on twitter are always open if you ever have any more specific questions you don't want to leave a comment here stop by one of the live streams that's fine hit me up on twitter slide in the dms if you know what i mean slide in the dms there let me know any questions i'm more than happy to answer and help in any way i can there at the end of the game my entire goal with this channel and through this community is just to help people out i think there's a lot of opportunity uh 
to be someone who spends no to minimal money in this game and have an awesome team and be very successful. And I want to share my understanding and my processes and knowledge through that to hopefully help you all out in doing so. That is going to do it for today's video, though. Until next time, I'll catch you all around later.